Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the show. Thanks for tuning in with me today. I am super excited for today because if you heard the promos, you follow me on social, you will know that today marks a brand new season of the show. I'm so excited to get back into filming more content for you, brand new episodes for you so that we can continue to bring you the real story behind what it takes to actually build a business and actually create wealth. And so on Thursdays, we're going to have a little bit of a different format. We are going to be doing trending topics, whether it's something that's in the news or the media that we find may be important for you to hear about, maybe have my opinion on a topic, or for me to break it down to explain exactly what's going on and how it applies to you and your business. And today marks the very first one of these. So I am so excited. Today's episode, we are going to talk about something that's happening right now in Chicago, which is the Democratic National Convention. And if you're like, oh my gosh, she's talking about politics. No, I am not. We are actually going to break down what's going on in our country news, in really world news, and how it applies to you. So very first, obviously, the party bid farewell to former President Joe Biden. And as he gave thanks to the American people, the focus really shifted to what the American future may look like under a presidency with Kamala Harris. At the convention, they talked all about the U.S. economy as well as what her plans are, which has really been under a microscope in the news and in the media. Obviously, we've been talking about it weekly at Newsmax. If you've caught me every Sunday, I'm on Newsmax. So if you haven't tuned in um, on American Agenda, we break down the economy and what's going on. And so I thought, let's unpack what has been discussed at the convention, why it matters to you and small businesses. Plus, let's discuss her plan on what she would like to do, which is raise the corporate tax rate to 28%. Now, let's make this super clear before we begin. I am not here to praise or bash Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party. My goal is to help you get a better understanding of what the economy will likely look like under a Kamala Harris presidency if she were to win and how you could prepare for it. That's what this is about. So let's start by looking at what happened at the convention so far. So as I said, Joe Biden was first to speak and he shared how the main focus of the Democratic Party is going to be the economy, which quite honestly, I found interesting because we are under the economy that he created in the last four years. He stated, and I quote, we have a thousand billionaires in America. And do you know what the average tax rate they pay? 8.2%. Now, CNN has come out and stated in an article that this number is wildly misleading and it is likely much, much higher. But Biden and the Democratic Party really are focused to make sure that we talk about billionaires and business owners and how much tax they should pay. We know this as Kamala Harris began to verbalize her economic plans for the economy just recently. And one of the key themes that she's sharing that has emerged is her commitment to addressing the high inflation that's going on in our country, the cost of raising children, and the financial pressures that all Americans are facing, specifically the working and middle classes. Obviously, these are all issues that resonate with so many of us and these policies that she's designing to tackle them head on. Now, one of the pieces of her economic agenda is, of course, her proposal to raise the corporate tax rate, which is currently 21 percent under the Trump tax cuts. She wants to raise that to 28. Now, during Trump's presidency, he wanted to ensure that business owners were not taxed unfairly. He cut corporate rates that were once 35 percent down to 21 percent as part of his 2017 tax reform, which those are expiring in 2025. Now, obviously, many small business owners, CEOs and corporations have really benefited from these tax cuts. And this position on taxes has really made him a business-friendly president. Now, Harris, on the other hand, is advocating for this 28%. And just to share my opinion on the matter, we have done so much research. You guys know I'm a massive data nerd, so I love researching taxes and numbers and the economy and analytics. And a lot of the things we know to be true— and we have proof, not opinions, not ways that we're trying to buy votes, not talking points in the media. We know for a fact, when we look back at human history in our country, we know for a fact that when tax rates are between 15 to 17 percent, that inflation comes down, 
markets climb and middle and working class Americans have more money in their pocket. And we know that the country will actually have more revenue. They get more revenue. We, we, this is an opinion. I have no bearing on whether this is true or not. It's just facts. We know that the revenue will actually be collected, will be higher in our country when the tax rates are between 15 to 17 percent. So from a strictly economic principle, raising the tax rates, we have all of the data. We're not trying to charter a rover to Pluto or, you know, dis discover some new AI. Like, this, the economy's been around now for a while. We have all the data to show what tax rates work and what economies have done really well in. And if we want a booming economy like the 1990s, we know that we need the rates back to be between 15 to 17 percent. Now, when Trump was president, he had the head of his economic council was the same gentleman that served under President Reagan. They did a lot of work when they in initiated all of the Reagan tax cuts. That's why Trump did a lot of those tax cuts in 20. 2017. Then, of course, we roll into the craziness of COVID. Everything gets kind of out of whack. And now we're trying to right the ship again. But there is a fiscally responsible way to put money back into the pockets of working people and having companies and billionaires pay their fair share. But again, we know that when you just you could take 100 percent 100%. You could insure a tax tomorrow on 100% for all billionaires to pay 100% of their earnings and taxes, and it still will not balance the budget. It will not increase revenue. And we know for a fact that those billionaires are just going to take their companies and their empires to other areas within the world that have more favorable rates, which are going to hurt the working class in middle America. That was my commentary, but I want to just jump back for a hot second to what Kamala Harris's campaign spoke spokesman talked about. Now, James Singer emphasized that an increase, this is his opinion, is a fiscally responsible way to ensure large corporations and billionaires pay their fair share. Well, we know for facts, again, I'm not trying to get your vote, so it doesn't actually matter who I agree with or not. We actually, when we look at the data and we look back at history of the economy, we know that that's not true. Now, they say this tax hike is not about just raising revenue, that it's about shifting the economic burden to large corporations. And Harris is arguing that they can afford to contribute more to society. The additional funds that they're saying that this tax increase would bring in are to fund various initiatives. Surprise, surprise, raise taxes, expand government, and, oh, let's give the people a child tax credit, and let's give them some money for housing, and let's address the medical debt. Now, these are certainly ambitious plans, but they raise some questions that we should be asking is, is this feasible? And how does this actually impact the economy? We all know that the challenges with inflation and rising costs and how much ex more expensive everything is now has been difficult, not just on all of us, but on small businesses. During the Small Business Council that happened during the DNC, they discussed economic plans and how it could present challenges and opportunity. According to them, on one hand, an increased tax rate could mean higher costs for small businesses, yes, that are also structured as S-Corps or C-Corps. On the other hand, they are saying that the proposed targeted tax breaks and support measures are designed to help small businesses navigate challenges in inflation. So in one hand, they're saying, we're going to charge you more, but oh, don't worry, we're also going to save you money. I don't quite understand how that balances out. To me, it sounds like there's a lot of gaslighting going on. It kind of felt like an abusive relationship where it's like, hey, we're going to do all of this to you, but this is going to somehow be better I don't necessarily know how that will work. Now, there's another thing I want to pivot to because I know that we've got a lot of real estate investors that listen to the show, people that are even looking to buy maybe their first home or a vacation home or a second home, looking at the housing market going, what on earth is going on, right? Sellers still think that it's 2021, 2022. Buyers think that it is pre-COVID. And I think that there is a lot of bipolar happening in this housing market, especially with what's happening in the economy. So, we have seen that housing is now unaffordable. I mean, you can't take rates from 3.5% to 7%, especially for first-time home buyers, and expect them to be able to buy a home, to comfortably live in, while groceries, insurance, gas, cost of living expenses are up everywhere. 
As of June of this year, the median sell price of a home was 442000 which was up 4% from 2023. Meanwhile, the national average of a 30-year fixed mortgage was nearly 7% which is double than it was the previous year. And renters aren't much better off because the median rent prices are still hovering well above the pre-pandemic levels. Now, Harris's plan targets the role of financial investors in this crisis. Her campaign highlighted how corporate landlords are buying up large numbers of single-family homes, which is driving up prices and making it harder for Americans to afford a home. However, I don't necessarily know that it's landlords that's the problem. It's large, huge corporations like Blackstone. She essentially wants to take Wall Street out of the real estate market. Now, during Trump's presidency, tax rates were designed to stimulate investment and economic growth. If we think that it's chaotic now, Harris's proposal for a $25,000 down payment credit rebate free money, I don't call it what you want, is basically designed to give first-time home buyers a leg up. This is what she's calling it as, right? However, what I want to tell you will happen is it will create so much chaos in the market. And if you think that prices on homes are expensive now, giving $25,000 to first-time home buyers is going to drive up all other real estate. So whatever house might be $150,000 or $200,000 or $400,000, depending on the market that you live in, you can expect to see anywhere from a 10, 15, 20% increase on those homes, as now there will be, again, bidding wars like there was during the pandemic. So for small business owners, investors, entrepreneurs, what are some key takeaways for you? Of course, stay informed. Do your research and always be prepared for the potential changes that may be coming very soon, whether it's how to navigate a higher corporate tax rate, whether it's taking advantage of some of the new measures that might come in, understanding how the DNC, the RNC, how the presidential candidates and the administrations and their proposals can affect you is really important. Now, we here are going to continue to monitor the developments of the convention and beyond the plans, the policies, how the economy is going to affect you because it is changing and it is changing fast. So if you have any specific questions about what's going on in the market, what's going on in the economy, how is this going to affect you and your business? please feel free to reach out to us. We are going to be doing a Q&A on the show coming up soon. It's part of our new season. So if you have any questions, concerns, let us know, and maybe we'll get to answer your question live on the show. So we will stay up to date on all of the trending topics to bring you the real story of exactly what is going on. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.